was done under the strangest circumstance. We made a pilot film, and uh, I thought it was jolly good. See how English I've gotten? But uh, we made 22 of them before there was any thought of a sponsor or, or anything. You know, we're very commercial in America. You just don't do a show. And uh, that would be 1955. And uh, it was quite a weird experience to be 22 shows ahead and not be on the air. My dear departed mother, I couldn't convince her. I was working under a very high salary. She tried to slip me money from time to time. And it was uh, rather difficult to, to sustain the velocity of the comedy of it because we were making them and they weren't on the air. The head of the network, Mr. Uh, Paley, thought it was great. He says, there's plenty of time to sell this. And uh, at that time, Milton Berle was literally the king of television. And he was on the other network than mine. NBC and we were CBS Columbia and uh, if you were put on a show opposite the eight o'clock spot he was on that was being thrown to the dogs because his rating was very high and finally when we were bought by the candle cigarette people they put us opposite him and uh, I didn't like that you know although I'm a compulsive gambler and I thought, well, at least we'll get the big decision. And so the first week's rating came in, and he had 48. We had 10. That is disaster. And the next week, 47 for him, 12 for us. And the third week, just as bad. And I stopped calling. I said, why take this pain on all the time? Because it was a good series, I thought. Evidently, the children discovered the show, even though it was an adult show. And one afternoon, I walked into the CBS offices, and you feel an invisible electricity from the stenographers, the secretaries, and they've been trying to get me on the phone all day. I've stopped calling. I didn't want to be hit in the stomach again, you know? And the weirdest thing happened. It went, so, 48 for us, 12 for him. But, I mean, overnight. Well, who 